Our good friend Matt McKibben writes to Adam and Adam versus the man.com subject therapy robots question mark one of the cool predictions you made which stuck in my mind was the idea of therapy robots being able to help you sort out your problems on a case-by-case -case basis this would help a tremendous amount of humanity overcome emotional thinking and work out the logical solutions as if you had your therapist right there at a moment's notice now this is actually a lot bigger than matt makes it out to be because i think of uh you know, my future predictions is being testable, at least subject to a, a simple test of, is this something that's already happening now and something that's been happening leading up to it now, as opposed to just a, few, a fluke that I'm extrapolating from. The reason this is so important in this particular prediction is understanding government as violence. Think about the definition of the word itself, govern, to control. The mechanism, mechanism of control being the application of force or violence, coercion, right? So what makes people violent? What makes society violent? And you can look and, and, and historically prove now that we are living in the most peaceful times in human history. That is a beautiful thing to be celebrated. Yeah, go team people. And what we have done and, and coming to this point is the only violence that we really accept or, or, or support is, aside from self-defense, the institutionalized violence and coercion of government. So we've kind of gone from where anybody can do violence whenever they feel like it with you know, flimsy excuses or because the king said so or because God told them or because I'm the biggest guy and I can pick up the biggest rock so I'm in charge so screw you, to today where the, the greatest violence that we get comes from modern institutionalized bureaucratic democratic governments. And if you understand that that violence still has a psychological root, what is it? that drives that violence? What insecurity, what fear, what irrationality, or as Matt says, emotional thinking? So my prediction, my fantasy, if you will, about where we're going in the future and how we're going to overcome government as a phenomenon is that at some point in technological development, we're all gonna get therapy robots. Now, are they gonna be actual robots or a chip in your head or just something to program on your computer? Of course, I was always open to all of those possibilities, but you can imagine that at some point we're gonna have the technology where you're gonna have a, a, I don't know, a floating robot made in your house, right? That's gonna have a computer in it that's smarter than you. That's only a decade or two away at this point. And anytime you start yelling at your wife, it's gonna be there over your shoulder. Tell me how you really feel, Adam. <laughs> and be able to diffuse the situation and talk to you about your childhood and get into the real issues here. And when you were able to address all of these root psychological problems, I mean, think about why people uh, are, you know, fall sway to politicians who use fear to manipulate them into supporting policies that are immoral and obviously not even in their own best interests. So I think if we can address that, it's gonna be one of the key things that makes me very confident that we are evolving past statism as a form of institutionalized violence. So how is this happening today? Well, you can already tell with computers and the growth of the internet how people are able to connect like never before. I mean, how many of you have had some personal problem in your life and Googled how to get over a girlfriend who just dumped me? You know, I mean, there's like, the, and there's forums about this. There's, there's people who have written stories about this because the anonymity of the internet provides a powerful way for people to connect when they've gone through traumatic events or they have psychological issues as opposed to turning to violence. So already this has happened. I mean, just think about how many connections and how much therapeutic benefit humanity has already gotten from the internet. And I'm not just talking about sexual healing. So, well, you are correct again, once again, Mr. Kokesh, via The Economist, we will all have our own therapy robots. It's happening. If you are as correct with your other predictions of the singularity and eye contacts, and that, by the way, that's that we're going to have cameras in our contact lenses, but, you know, computers in our brains, if you don't want that, you can just have the contact lens. I eagerly await our transhumanist future with no state and the maximum amount of human liberty and prosperity and liberty, Matt McKibben. The story is from The Economist. The computer will see you now. Ellie is a psychologist and a damned good one at that. Smile in a certain way and she knows precisely what your smile means. Develop a nervous tick or tension in an eye and she instantly picks up on it. She listens to what you say, processes every word, works out the meaning of your pitch, your tone, your posture, everything. She is at the top of her game, but according to a new study, her greatest asset is that she is not human. 
When faced with tough or potentially embarrassing questions, people often do not tell doctors what they need to hear. Yet the researchers behind Ellie, led by Jonathan Gratch at the Institute for Creative Technologies in Los Angeles, suspected from their years of monitoring human interactions with computers that people might be more willing to talk if presented with an avatar. To test this idea, they put 239 people in front of Ellie, pictured above, to have a chat with her about their lives. Half were told, truthfully, that they would be interacting with an artificially intelligent virtual human. The others were told, falsely, yes, you can lie in the name of science, that Ellie was a bit like a puppet and was having her strings pulled remotely by a person. Designed to search for psychological problems, Ellie worked with each participant in the study in the same manner. She started every interview with rapport building questions such as, where are you from? She followed these with more clinical ones like, how easy is it for you to get a good night's sleep? She finished with questions intended to boost the participant's mood. For instance, what are you most proud of? Throughout the experience, she asked relevant follow-up questions. Can you tell me more about that? For example, while providing the appropriate nods and facial expressions. Oh, he sounds like the perfect therapist. This is, this is perfect. Like, I want to talk to Ellie. This, I mean, I, I learned something about myself from talking to a computer. This is like pretty cool exercise here. But this is also the sort of typical idealized experience that you would have with a good therapist. The problem is no therapist is perfect and most people have a certain psychological uh, reluctance to fully openly communicating with them. So, lie on the couch, please. During their time with Ellie, all participants had their faces scanned for signs of sadness and were given a score ranging from zero to one. Also, three real human psychologists who were ignorant of the purpose of the study analyzed transcripts of the sessions to rate how willingly the participants disclosed personal information. These observers were asked to look at responses to sensitive and intimate questions such as how close are you to your family and tell me about the last time you felt really happy. They rated responses on a seven point scale from minus three to plus three. All participants were also asked blah 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 blah. Dr. Gratch and his colleagues reported that though everyone interacted with the same computer program, their experiences differed markedly based on what they believed they were dealing with. Those who thought Ellie was under the control of a human operator reported greater fear of disclosing personal information and said they managed more carefully what they expressed during the session than did those who believed they were simply interacting with a computer. Imagine that. When you know that your therapist is incapable of judgment, you will get more from the therapeutic experience even if it's just a computer doing it. And really, the process of a therapy uh, session is really pretty simple. As it says, there's rapport building, getting to know you, understand your background. There's probing questions that are like, you know, looking for psychological issues that can be improved upon through greater self-awareness. And then the kind of questions that make you feel good about yourself. <laughs> Don't flatter yourself. You're not that smart. A computer can do the job at least as well as you. Crucially, all right, all right. I take that back. There's something about a human connection that will never be replaced in people's lives. But for the most important of psychological problems that lead people to violence, I'm pretty confident in saying that we're gonna find a better answer through this kind of technology than from human to human therapy. Crucially, the psychologists observing the subjects found that those who thought they were dealing with a human were indeed less forthcoming, averaging 0.56 compared with the other group's score of 1.11. It's a pretty big difference. The first group also betrayed fewer signs of sadness, averaging 0.08 compared with the other group's 0.12 sadness score. Did you see what this means? You are more likely to cry when talking about how your parents didn't satisfy your emotional needs as a child in front of a computer than in front of a human therapist, or rather in front of a computer that you know is just a program than in front of a computer that you think is being controlled by a human. That's really, powerful information right there. This quality of encouraging openness and honesty, he believes, Dr. Gratch, will be of particular value in assessing the psychological problems of soldiers, a view shared by America's Defense Advanced Research, Research Project Agency, which is helping pay for the project. Uh-oh, DARPA's behind this, never mind, it's all bullshit. Soldiers place a premium on being tough and many avoid seeing psychologists at all costs. And I mean, I've dealt with PTSD myself. I can tell you this from experience, although it's really not a big secret that when you're conditioned that way to be tough, that you're gonna be more likely to open up to a computer than a real person, especially when you have confidence that 
confidentiality is going to be respected if you think that the computer, you know. Now, where does this go with like actual application? I, I have a feeling that in order to give people the absolute confidence, because I wouldn't do this over the internet. Obviously, the NSA is listening. If I was in the military or if I was a veteran, I wouldn't go into my commander's office and be like, well, let me sit in the, comp in the corner and talk to your computer therapist that's probably going to record all this shit for my record. No, but if you could have a, a, a truly independent device that was sold as secure and, and simply programmed to do this, I think a lot of people would appreciate this as, as, as an experiment. I mean, I certainly, if, if this came on the market today, I'll tell you, I would buy it and I would try it. If you could, if you could capture this technology, in, in a you know a smartphone sized device, I could turn it on, I could see a face, I could program it for what I wanted, and it could do all of this for me. Yeah, I think that would be valuable, even, even for enlightened self, Adam Kokesh, yes. So that means conditions such as PTSD to which military men and women are particularly prone often get dangerous before they are caught. Ellie could change things for the better by confidentially informing soldiers with PTSD that she feels they could be a risk to themselves and others and advising them about how to seek treatment. If that is, a cynical trooper can be persuaded that Ellie really isn't a human psychologist in disguise because if Ellie can pass for human, presumably a human can pass for Ellie.